Hello everyone and welcome back to Let's Play Pokemon Soul Silver. In the last part, we made our way to Cerulean City after going through the rest of the long mile east of Fuchsia. And now it's time for us to explore around this particular area, which with what we've done in Kanto so far is sort of the last region we can reach normally. Uh, everything west of Cerulean just about, you actively need to go through Diglett Cave to reach. So there's an entire section that's still walled off. That theoretically means you also could choose to play through Kanto in the original gym order if you so wished. It's just very, I don't want to say very out of the way, it's just less convenient overall I find, especially in terms of the count of the gyms you can do in one order. It's not like the levels really matter overall. That there is the cleanse tag. That's what I often get confused, the spirit tag that we got a few parts ago with. That actively reduces the encounter rate as long as the Pokemon in your first slot is holding it and it is a high enough level. It sort of works like a repel, but not quite at the same time. Now, we also know that there's supposedly a shady figure around here somewhere, so let's take a look at the gym. Oh, God! Oops, I so sorry, you not hurt, okay? I'm very busy. No time for talking with you. Not good for me if seen by somebody. Oh no, you seen me already! I make big mistake. Hey you, forget you see me, okay? You seen, heard, no nothing, okay? Bye! Bye bye, a go go! Ah. The classic English grunt. One of my favorite NPCs, and uh, getting a little ahead of ourselves here, I love that they eventually made a cameo again in Gen 5. Very easy to miss cameo, all things considered, but still cool as all hell. I do kind of find it funny, though, that history repeats basically here in Cerulean. As those who played any version of Gen 1 or watched my Fire Red LP back when would know, the only active theft we see Team Rocket do in that game happens in Cerulean. You need to fight the Team Rocket grunt to even leave the area. Because uh, I think the event flag triggers after beating both the gym leader and doing the Nugget Bridge stuff. Now, there's also another returning portion of Cerulean City here. And we're not going to do it for a while, but I might as well talk about it a little bit. I heard of a cave here that had a horribly powerful Pokemon. That's why I came here. Huh? My dowsing machine's responding. Just to our west, like in any other version of Cerulean, is Cerulean Cave. A cave that's meant to be post-game overall in any version of Gen 1, but if memory serves, you can access right now in HeartGold Soul Silver. Oh no! Hiding I was, but you did find me found in no time! Me only one from another country. Yet, no big business, okay? Think I did, if stop the energy, big panic and be unlucky. For here people. Secret it is my mission, so I tell you why not. But if when you do versus me, a man I be in mind secret to you tell, understand? Battle begin we do. Uh, the last battle in the game against a Team Rocket Grunt. I think he only has a Golbat? Yeah, it, that's all it is. Uh, but yeah, we're not tackling Surian Cave for a while, and I believe at this point you can actively tackle it. Uh, mostly because level-wise, we're still not on parity for it yet, surprisingly, as well the wild Pokemon we're about ready for what lies at the end of it, that's always what lies at the end of it, we're not ready for by a long shot yet, especially in terms of just Pokeball amounts. I, uh, no, 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 believe it, I can't strong very much be you. Match, I am not to you. Okay, tell you my secret I will. Machine parts steal by me. Hide it I did in Jim of Cerulean. Near inflatable tube put it that I did. Look for it at Jim. But you forget me you not. Bid you for sure I will. Come from Johto they will, mine allies, yes. Well revenge they are. You say what? Team Rocket bye bye a go go? Broken up it says you. Oh no. Should I do what now from on me? Okay. I my country go home. Make Team Rocket, I will. Goodbye. So long. Now, if memory serves, I mistakenly claimed that in my Crystal LP. He's meant to be from Unova. Uh, not entirely true. If memory serves, his dialogue is still as somewhat broken sounding in Unova, so he's from somewhere else. But let's go see whatever he stole from the power plant, I guess. It's somewhere here in the gym near one of the inflatable tubes you can reach. Uh, I'll just tell you for a fact, though, it's on the top left of the gym. 
right about here. It's apart from the machine! Yay! We can now take this back to the power plant and sort of conclude the ongoing plotline of this entire region. That's not just getting gyms. Hello, sir! I have brought your part for you! It is giant and heavy and covering me in oil. Ah, uh, yeah, the thing you have. Is that the part that was stolen from my beloved generator? You found it. Thank you so much. Now all I have to do is attach this part here. Whirr! Yes, it's running. Whirr, whirr! <laughs> Thanks. Here, go ahead and take this TM as a reward. TM57 is not the worthwhile reward from this. TM57 is my charge beam. It'll shoot beams. It can also sometimes raise special attack. I want to say it's like one of the few TMs you can technically get twice. Uh, the other thing of note is all the way back here in Lavender Town. As now that power's been restored to the area, two things are now active. And the first is over here. Ah, so you're the Kyle who solved the power plant's problem. Thanks to you, I never lost my job. I tell you, you're a real lifesaver. Please, take this as my thanks. And we get an expansion card for our Poke Gear. This is necessary for two, technically three things. As while you can still access all the same radio channels as you could back in Johto here, you now have access at the top of the radio to the Pokey Flute channel, which allows you to wake up the Snorlaxes just straight up. But also, now you can access what's known as Sinnoh and Hoenn Sound. On Wednesdays on the Pokemon Music Channel and Thursdays on the Pokemon Music Channel, Hoenn and Sinnoh Sound play respectively. Hoenn Sound is a remixed version of that game's Route 101 theme. Sinnoh Sound plays a Route 201 theme remix. And they actively both attract certain Gen 3 and 4 Pokemon on specific routes. Uh, and I think they are like a 20% encounter rate. You can encounter Zigzagoons, Spindas, Linoons, Wizmers, Makuhitas, Absols, Plusles, Minans, Numiles, and Spoinks with the Hoenn sound. Hi, I heard that you lost your cherished Poke doll. If I find it, you'll give me a Magnet Train Pass? I'll go find it for you. You think you lost it when you went to Vermilion City? Pardon? I shouldn't decide what you should do? But I'm really worried. What if someone finds it? And this is the other thing that the power plant allows us to do. We can now actively do something for this girl over in Vermilion. Uh, Sinnoh Sound, you can catch Metatites, Chatots, Bidoofs, Buizels, Chinglings, Bronzers, Shinxes, Boodoos, and Carnivines. So not too many Hoenn Sinnoh Pokemon available through that, but enough to help. I love Clefairy, but I could never catch one. So I'm making do with the Pokedoll I found. What, the girl who lost this Pokedoll is sad? Okay, could you take this Pokedoll back to that poor little girl? I'll befriend a real Clefairy of my own one day. Best advice for that dude, go to Mount Moon. It's a little out of the way, but it's worth it. So now we can take this back to her and get our reward. But if memory serves, I think we're doing something else first. Hello there. Hi, my name is Steven. The champion from the Hoenn region. Have we met before? Hmm, that's not possible. All the trainers I've battled seem to have the same look anyway. Especially the ones who gave me tough battles. By the way, have you heard of a Pokemon called Latios? I'm investigating why Latios, a Pokemon from Hoenn, decided to leave Hoenn to come here. Latios is a Pokemon that has a lot to do with Soul Dew, a gem like Orb. Considering the fact that Latios is now in Kanto, it's possible to assume that this has to do with Soul Dew. Latios is a Pokemon that travels a great distance. It'll be difficult to find without any machine to track it with. But any trainer will be drawn to it, won't they? I must go. May our journey just cross again. Now that might seem a little random to just have the Sin the Hoenn champion show up and talk about a Latios, but that's because Kanto has its own roaming Pokemon. Latios or Latios, if you're playing Heart Gold, after this scene will spawn in and work the exact same way as every other roaming legendary. Going from route to route, going usually a great distance if you try to uh, fly somewhere to catch up with it. We'll be catching that down the road. For now, it's time for us to take care of the Snorlax over here. Just play the Pokey Flute and talk to it and you can fight it. I recommend saving if you want to catch it because finding one of these is a little rough. But Snorlax is also a completely new Pokemon for us. Pure normal type, so it's weak to fighting, immune to ghosts. Snorlax is very healthy. High HP, high, I think, special defense, and decent physical attack, but it's 
uh, the rest of its stats aren't much to write home about. With that said, while it's very slow, it is a very strong Pokemon to have around. It's the progenitor of the Ursa Ring type to me in terms of how good it is with physical attacks. If you're looking for something that can use those attacks well, even if it doesn't get super effective with them, you could do a hell of a lot worse. Uh, Ability-wise, you're usually looking at immunity or thick fat, and this particular one also has leftovers to start, so it'll recover HP with its held item at the end of its turn. Immunity prevents the Pokémon from being poisoned. Thick fat reduces damage from fire and ice-type Pokémon, or moves at least. Overall, I'd say thick fat's probably the better one of those two to have, unless you're going up against a Pokémon that might have a move that can badly poison you, as badly poison will definitely eat through a Snorlax's HP pool pretty quickly. Uh, with that said, I did save before this fight because I was very aware of the chance that uh, I could either accidentally inflict a status ailment like Burn on it, or I would have a uh, struggle start going in. You're kind of safe with HP on this one in particular otherwise though, because it does have moves like Rest from Memory. It's just a matter of whether or not it actively decides to get into the Pokeball. And I believe this is the only location a Snorlax can spawn in this game, whereas in most versions of Gen 1, there's the one here and the one, uh, west of Celadon. But I believe if you go back and beat the Elite Four in Lance again, I believe this one might respawn. If not, uh, I don't know where else to get a Snorlax, honestly. It probably respawns, though, if, if memory tracks at least. I used one back on my yellow team back when I think I wanted to use one at some point early on in my fire red LP. I just overall decided I had better priorities. Please, for the love of God, get in the Ultra Balls, though. You're running out of HP, man. Oh, God, my face. I do find it funny, though, that Snorlax despite usually just being a joke of being very hungry or very sleepy, ended up just kind of starting up an entire trend in Pokemon of a Snorlax-like. Usually something like an Ursa Ring or Slack Hots line, something that's usually kind of slow, but will hit you harder. It's like it's a giant bear of some sort. Uh, and to my knowledge, the most recent incarnation of this was Beware in Gen 7? Uh, I don't recall there being a Snorlax-like in Gen 8, at least. It's been a little bit, though, so I could very well be wrong. I do find it a little weird that they relocated where the Snorlax was for Gen 2, because it was more to our east, uh, closer to south of Lavender Town than it was here. And I can't really think of a reason to why they would change that besides wanting to railroad you directly into Diglett Cave, rather than heading east onto, I think it's Route 11, and then into Diglett Cave? Because it's not like there's anything super necessary or cool on Route 11 overall from memory. Still, uh, let's nickname the Snorlax because it's an important Pokemon to me usually. Let's name it after a friend I haven't seen in a while, and it, in a way, it reminds me of Snorlax in the way of that. It's always been dependable, even if I haven't seen it in a long time. Welcome on, Lucas. Alright, so now let's talk about Rat 11. Uh, Route 11 Pokemon-wise, Rattatas, Magnemites, Drowsies, and Hypnos, because this is where you could find Drowsy, I think, natively in the original Generation 1. Uh, plus those Minins and Shinxes if you use the sounds. Uh, the most notable thing is you can still catch Combies and Heracrosses here if you use Headbutt. But that said, there's a lot of trees, so good luck. Uh, I don't even think there's any super important trainers here. Uh, I think the most notable thing you can find here is the TM for Grass Knot. Uh, and Grass Knot's a move I don't really use because I don't use a lot of Pokemon that can learn Grass type moves. Uh, but Grass Knot is an interesting move all the same in that its power is determined by the weight of the target. Generally, the heavier the Pokemon, the better. Uh, with that said, a lot of the Pokemon you use it on are probably gonna place it around. 60 to 80 power, 100 power maybe here and there, 120 is kind of rare with it. Could be useful, has a lot of PP, not for nothing, but... With how unpredictable, despite also being very set enemy weights are, that makes it rather situational for me. But now we can also head back down to where we saw Suicune when we first reached Vermilion. We can find some cool stuff down here, like a sticky barb, I believe that is a held item. Uh, that will get stuck onto enemies if they use physical attacks. 
And then inflict damage? Let me look that up to make sure I'm right. Ah, uh, yep. Damages holder at end of turn, but changes holder on contact. So, yeah, that could be useful. And a big pearl, and that sells for a good bit. There's a lot of items you can just find around to sell in this particular game, it feels like. Our business in that area is concluded, though, for now at least. So let's head up back to Saffron and make sure we give that Poké Doll over to the Mimic, as it's technically important. Yay, that's my Clefairy Poké Doll! See the terror with the right arm is sewn on? That's proof! Okay, I'll give you this Magnet Train Pass as I promised. So the Magnet Train Pass isn't the most useful thing. Because what it is... It allows you to use the Magnet Train, just straight up, like it, it name implies. But the Magnet Train just isn't that useful in any version of Gen 2. Uh, because what it's meant to do is give you a one-stop trip from Saffron to Goldenrod. But that's just not too useful because using Fly twice just feels shorter overall. In fact, it probably is shorter in some instances. I'm convinced the entire reason you need to do a midway stop when flying from anywhere in Kanto to Johto or vice versa at the Indigo Plateau is because they wanted you to use this? But why would you? Besides it having a really good but way too short theme. But now we're in Goldenrod. Accents on the O for some reason. That that line probably makes more sense in uh, Japanese. Kind of under underwhelming that the entire plot line of Kanto that's not gym badges is just to use a very not useful transportation method, but oh well. For now, it's time for us to head back to Cerulean, because in order for us to do anything else in this town, including the gym, we need to go find the gym leader because she's just not there. So we need to head route north onto Route 24 and 25. Uh, route 24 doesn't have a lot of note, Pokemon-wise. Uh, you can catch Abras in here, I think, still, like you could in any version of Gen 1. Venomoths, I think? Uh, Sunkerns? Uh, Linoon, you can catch B-Doops here, I guess, if you want a Bibberol and Buizels. But the Nugget Bridge is completely empty, but there is still a Nugget Bridge-esque mechanic here? We got about five or six trainers in a row we need to fight, and they are required. Some of them have new Pokemon, most don't. Speed up theme for this part is the starting game fight theme from Mega Man X Command Mission. Love that game's soundtrack, even if the game itself wears out its welcome pretty fast by the end of it. New Pokemon, though, this is Granbull. This evolves from Snubble at level 23. As of this gen is normal type, eventually becomes a pure fairy type down the line, so it's currently weak to fighting immune to ghost. Granbull's got a pretty good attack set, all things considered, for a Pokemon you can get relatively early in Johto, but that's all it's really got going for besides an okay HP stat. Uh, it's not too fast, special stats aren't much to write home about, even its physical defense isn't that great. Okay, learn set for early game though, so if you manage to find yourself a snubble, I'd say it'd be overall worth it to have around if you're looking for something that can do physical attacks decently. There's just usually better options. The fairy type did a lot to help that Pokemon. In fact, it did a lot to help a lot of normal types that were converted, or at least had the subtype added on down the line. At this point, we're on Route 25, though, and by and large, the Pokemon you can find here are the same. Barring, I think Slackoth is now available via headbutting. Uh, I believe Buneris can be found in swarms here and there. Uh, and I think you just find straight-up Bell Sprouts here compared to the previous route. Again, nothing too spectacular, but at least there's some new Pokemon you want to catch here if you're looking for the full Pokedex kind of deal. I want to say there's only... There's very few routes or areas in the game that don't have a new Pokemon to them to catch in some form or manner. And those are very back and forth. And at this point, I'm going to go back to actively use the Pokemon Center because I was running a little low on the Pokemon's HP that I'm trying to get some levels here. Uh, 
Honestly, when it comes to Pokemon trainer pacing, I'm never a fan of here's like six in a row that are required that have very few Pokemon. Because resource-wise, it's just usually not worth the investment, if you catch my drift. There's just usually better ways, like I'd rather fight two trainers with three Pokemon each. That's generally just worth my time more, I find. Even if it is ultimately the same amount of experience. It mostly just comes down to how many times I'm hearing an encounter theme, seeing the widdly widdly widdlies at the start of the battle. And all that jazz. At least we're almost at the end of them. Now something I've always wanted to try that's a very specific subset of challenges for Pokemon is the No Evolutions challenges, because I know a lot of people will be like, I'm gonna play through all of Fire without evolving my Pokemon. I've never done that, but the older I've gotten, the more I've kind of wanted to give it a shot because it feels like the only playthrough where you'd get a lot of use out of, like, the, the, the X items that boost a specific status stage or two. As otherwise, those items just feel like they're not really there for any good reason. Barring, like, fighting things way over your level. Not exactly worth it. Hey, you even get a nugget! And immediately throw into another battle. Great. But yeah, I've always kind of wanted to try one of those playthroughs. I just haven't because I'm usually too focused on other things whenever I come back to a Pokemon game. As minor as it is. Now that I think about it, is this guy even taking me a required fight? Did I just leave that fight in for no reason? I very well may have. Oh well, I commentated over it. It's staying in. But now we're back towards Bill's house in the original game, so let's see who's staying on in here. They actually mentioned before, it's his grandfather. Hmm? You have my grandson? His name is Bill. He's in Johto. He does something with PCs. So I'm house-sitting. My grandson Bill told me a lot about a Pokemon that has a long tongue and has ring-like marks on the front of its legs, he said. You have that Pokemon, may I see it, please? He wants to see a lick of tongue. If you show it to him, you get an Everstone. Then in Heart Gold, you have to show him a Jigglypuff for the same Everstone. You get Evolution Stones from him from Gen 1 for showing a different mime. Uh, Heart Gold, you show him a Growlithe for a Firestone. Vulpix for that here in Soul Silver. Oddish, you show him in both versions for a Leaf Stone. Pichu for Thunderstones. And then a Star You in Soul Silver or a Meryl in, Wat in uh, Heart Gold for a Waterstone. Ah, oh, why don't you just show up and bug us now? Do you know what they call people like you? Pests. You heard me right. Pest. Oh, those badges you have. Are they Johto Gym badges? If you have eight, you must be good. Okay then, come to Cerulean Gym. I'll be happy to take you on. I'm Misty, the gym leader in Cerulean. Well, someone was on a date and we clearly, uh, barged in at the very wrong time. But now we can actively go challenge Misty's gym, as straightforward as it is. And they even give you a convenient little path all the way back to town. That was more worth it as a shortcut in any version of Gen 1, because I think there was at least an item along the way. Nowadays, you can just, I think, come... No, you can't come straight up that direction because of that ledge, but there's less reason to do it, is the point, I find, overall. If only because by this point, you actually have a uh, fly, and you didn't in the original game at this point. Gym time! Yo, legend in the making! Since Misty was away, I went off with some fun, too. <laughs> Her gym's entirely water-based. You can use Surf to go on the water. Uh, you can technically avoid doing that if you time getting around this particular trainer well enough. I didn't, so I'm now forced to go into the water. But even then, the water is wider than it looks, so you can actively be above or below most of the trainers in there. But we got another new Pokemon. This is a Zumarill. Water type alone in this generation. Eventually becomes Water Fairy. So it is currently weak to Grass and Electric. Azumarill's got a high HP stat and some good defense stats on top of that that get even stronger in some of the later gens, I believe, from memory serves. Uh, this is a fine enough pure water type. Azumarill, I think, gets boof boosted in every gen it's in because it has the abilities Thick Fat and Huge Power in this gen. So either Fire slash Ice Prevention or Huge Power, which just raises the attacks out of the Pokemon by a notable amount. Uh, the addition of the fairy typing to it down the line also gave it a very notable boost. For now, though, it's just a better Meryl, which is a good water type, but there are better. I'll always remember Misty's Gym for one particular reason, though, and that's that was the source of one of the biggest pokey rumors when I was a kid in my classes growing up. Uh, I want to say it was a kid named Steven in one of my classes. Uh, talked about how in yellow you could 
join Team Rocket by stealing Misty's some Pokemon, like her Starmie, I think, by sneaking up behind her with Surf. And I just believed that for some reason because I was naive and I didn't think anyone would lie about games at that time for some reason, let alone spread rumors for jokes. Go time, though. I was expecting you, you pest. You may have a lot of Johto Gym Badges, but you better not take me too lightly. My Water-type Pokémon are tough. And not for nothing, she did get a decent boost from her team in the original game, let alone uh, Gold, Silver, and Crystal. Starting off, she's going to be throwing out her Golduck. Water Pulse, Disable, Psychic, and Psych Up, and it has Damp for its ability. Damp is an interesting move in that it prevents Pokemon from using Self-Destruct Explosion, Mind Blown, and Misty Explosion, uh, causing them to just not faint or take damage. Uh, which is a little weird to put on a Pokemon in a gym battle overall, I find, but in the right circumstance that could be fun, like if you don't want to accidentally use Self-Destruct with, like, Metronome or something like that. Uh, the biggest thing it would give you in this particular instance is it prevents the ability Aftermath from damaging you, uh, which Aftermath is an ability that does damage equal to... I think one-fourth the attacker's HP after they KO the Pokemon in question. Uh, and some Pokemon have that, hey, I think even as of Gen 4, I want to say like Stunkies and Drifloons can have that. But we don't have any of those on our team, so not really going to find them. Next up, she's sending out her Quagsire. Water absorbs her ability, so don't try to use water attacks on it. Not like you really would anyway. Water Pulse, Amnesia, Rain Dance, and Earthquake. Earthquake's probably the biggest threat out of her entire team, honestly. Because unless you have someone who's a flying type or levitate, you're taking just a lot of ground type damage. Overall, due to my own team comp, this is probably her most competent Pokemon because it's only weak against grass, and I don't got any of that on my team. Unless I, for some reason, brought Scott in here, but he'd be way too underleveled. Uh, I just have to chip down that HP tank damage and hope I beat it within a short amount of turns. Bit weird that they put Amnesia on, because special attack isn't the Quagsire's specialty, it's physical attack overall, but I guess enough Amnesia just makes its special attack better anyway, so that's the point. I would just stick with using Earthquake overall rather than Water Pulse, though, in most cases. His Water Pulse isn't a bad move inherently, it's not the strongest, but uh, like the 1 in 5 chance of confusing a target is genuinely really good to have. It's just not the strongest. I guess they're just trying to boost whatever little damage they'll do. Not like they have a choice in terms of attack moves against a Crobat though, to be fair. Definitely came a long way fighting Misty, though, uh, compared to when I was a kid. Because for some reason as a kid, especially when I was real little, just playing Fire Red and Leaf Green, I would only try to beat her with my Fire Starter. Because I could occasionally find, like, a Pikachu in Viridian Forest, but I was like, nah, I gotta focus on the starter. They're the most valuable member of the team. Not yet realizing the importance of team comp. Oh, children. We're really dumb, except for when we're really not. Ooh, Air Slash. That is arguably better than Air Cutter, so I believe I end up replacing that finally. Cutter has a higher crit ratio, but I think the higher, higher power and flinching of Air Slash is just more important overall. Next up, though, if memory serves, she is throwing out her new Pokemon uh, that we haven't seen yet. Uh, she's throwing out her Lapras. Shell armor for its ability, so it just can't be crit hit, period. Ice Beam, Sing, Water Pulse, and Body Slam, so it's trying to either freeze you and put you to sleep and then do high damage. Lapras themselves, though, is a Water Ice type. Uh, they can have Water Absorb as well as an ability, which is really good. Water Ice type means they're weak against Fighting, Rock, Grass, and Electric. L Lapras has a very high HP stat and a good enough set of special and physical stats on top of that, even though it doesn't have a pure specialty. It's not the fastest Pokemon either. But it has a good enough learn set overall between water and ice type moves with some other things, like I think the occasional dragon move thrown in there. You could do a lot worse for a Pokemon to have around that's a water type. Uh, you actually could have caught one of these by now if you were exploring certain caves at certain times of day. Because uh, 
back in Union Cave, as we'll see down the line, you might be able to find one of those there over here and there. And not gonna lie, I like how you find it in this game compared to how they just give you one in Gen 1 by talking to that one NPC at Selfco. That never felt the greatest. I mean, it's easy, yeah, but sometimes just giving you a good Pokemon doesn't feel as good as catching it. I, I guess it's a matter of effort versus reward. Like, they give you an EV, and I like that, but that's because EV is literally what you make it. Either way, her final Pokemon that she's sending out is her Starmie. Natural cure for its ability, so be careful trying to put status ailments on it in case she switches out of it into it earlier. Holding a Citrus Berry, so it's probably gonna heal. Water Pulse, Confuse Ray, Ice Beam, and Recover. Like in the original fight, Recover is arguably the biggest threat here because you could be this close to finishing it off and it'll just recover more of its HP than it has any right to, really. And it'll probably often use Confuse Ray, and that's just an annoying move to get around in any situation. Being a Starmie, it's decently fast. It can hit you pretty hard with the special attacks, too, so be careful. Again, Starmie's not a bad water type in any stretch of the imagination. Plus, it can learn ice moves. Uh, not that ice moves are super effective against me, but uh, Mortis isn't exactly the tankiest Pokemon, as we've covered before. She's here to do damage and do damage fast. Very similarly to Starmie, now that I think about it. Uh, there we go. That's Misty out of the way. Only three gym badges remain. Looks like this is it. You really are good. I'll admit that you are skilled. Here you go. It's the Cascade Badge. Eh, hey, yeah. And time for a... Okay, TM. Here's another memento from this battle. Take it. I believe that's just straight up Water Pulse. It contains the move Water Pulse. It can sometimes confuse your foe. You've managed to defeat trainers all the way from Johto. I'm sure you have a good use for it. Uh, not really. But with that, I'm gonna need to end this off here. Thank you guys for watching, and in part 28, we're not quite done with Cerulean City proper. We have one more thing to take care of before we move on from town, because now that we've cleared Misty from the Seaside Cape up in the north, there's something else waiting for us there now. See you guys then.